known for its remarkable desert, its remnants of Greek and Roman cities, as well as its thriving culture. Libya was once a popular tourist destination. Today, when Libya is brought up in conversation, it is the war that comes up. The Libyan civil war between the rebel forces and Muammar Gaddafi's government began on February 15, 2011, when security forces fired on peaceful protesters in Benghazi. Although Gaddafi tried again and again for a ceasefire, protesters consistently rejected his offers. From February to September, there were an estimated 30,000 civilian deaths. Her neighbor was just going out to call her son to come inside. He was out in the, in the front yard doing something. She got shot right in the head from a sniper. She wasn't doing anything. She was just calling her son to come inside. There, there are mercenaries out on the streets. They're just shooting people who are walking out. She was like, help us, please. They're attacking the blood banks. They're attacking the hospitals. They're killing people in hospitals who are injured. This has created a society where civilians are afraid to leave their house for fear of being shot. Soon after the war began, on the 25th of February, the International Committee of the Red Cross had an emergency appeal for $6.4 million to meet the emergency needs of people affected by the unrest in Libya. There were also refugees fleeing the crisis. By the 10th of July, over 150 migrants were evacuated. Libyans are, you know, they call their heart, they're lions of the desert. And once they have something stuck in them, they will fight until they, they get it. The notion that aggression is a crime and that wars can be justified only if they ward off aggression or prevent its acquired, its practical and even theoretical significance, only after the First World War had demonstrated the horribly destructive potential of warfare under conditions of modern technology. In other words, Freedom has appeared in this debate like a does ex machine to justify what on rational grounds has become unjustifiable. After this war was believed to be over on the 1st of September 2011, only seven days after it began, the National Transition Council was created to help form a new government. However, on the 16th of May 2014, another war broke out this time between Islamist forces and the Libyan parliament, run by General Khalifa Haftar. And thus, the war continues. In Vietnam, 587,000 civilians were killed in 20 years, between 1955 to 1975. The Vietnam War was between the Communist North Forces and the Anti-Communist South Forces. The use of guerrilla warfare meant further involvement of villagers. Villagers had to be careful around soldiers of both sides since they were neutral. Nonetheless, villagers often aided in the making of punji traps and mines. The National Liberation Front, also known as the Viet Cong, which was based in the South but fought for the North, often consisted of teenagers who, despite their strong ideals, lacked any military training. After the Vietnam War ended during the Khmer Rouge regime, in which over a million people were executed, over three million people left Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia in the Indochina refugee crisis. A defoliant known as Agent Orange was used to deforest the land and expose the Ho Chi Minh Trail during the war. This defoliant has been suspected of causing many illnesses, including cancers and diseases. It wasn't until recently on the 9th of August, 2012, the United States and Vietnam began a cooperative cleaning up of Agent Orange in Vietnam. The Korean War broke out between Communist North Forces and the Anti-Communist South Forces after the end of the Japanese rule. Throughout the three years 1950 to 1953, there were a staggering two million civilian deaths. Throughout the war, the large use of jet planes and bombs destroyed the land. The bombs were often dropped on dams, which resulted in the flooding of rice fields and then led to the famine among the people. Outside of the deaths, the war left 128,000 families separated, many other survivors as refugees and resulted in many orphans. The 
The ending of the war did not signal an end to the social unrest. The war ended in an armistice, and the border between North and South Korea was drawn and separated the two sides permanently, also separating some families forever. The impacts are still seen today with over 1 million Korean immigrants in the United States. All three wars were tragic for the civilians. In Libya, they were unable to leave the house without feeling threatened. In Vietnam and Korea, they had to be careful around both sides because they were neutral and any action could be used against them. The number of fatalities were shocking and the amount of people displaced was equally so. Even with these overwhelming statistics, wars are still going on. Will there ever be an end to wars? Hannah Arendt writes that the sad truth is that most evil is done by people who never make up their mind to be good or evil, and that forgiveness is the only way to reverse the irreversible flow of history.